Rule number one for ice, mm -hmm. avoid it. Rule number two is go slow. Yeah. The ship is classed as an icebreaker, but you don't want to be going at speed and hitting a piece of ice that's really hard or old ice. In 1988, I got on my first Greenpeace ship in Canada as a volunteer. This will be my 32nd voyage, I believe. I'm on the Arctic sunrise in the position of ice navigator. That means I advise the captain uh, about ice conditions and how to proceed safely. The Arctic sunrise has what's called a crow's nest. It's approximately 27 meters above the sea level. It's a small workspace that the uh, captain can pass controls of the ship from the bridge up to the crow's nest to me, and at that time I can have full ship control. I see a lot of ice and starboard, maybe a half a mile ahead. Over. Okay, copy that. When you are ready, I will pass the control to you. I have control of the main engine, the pitch on the propeller, and the rudder for steering. I'm going to pass the steering now with two bumps. Okay, ready. I have zero on the rudder now. So I can go ahead, astern, port, starboard, and increase or decrease the speed as I need to. Gives you a great view from up there. From 27 meters high, I can see a lot further in front of me. Then I can look and pick my way through the ice, through the leads, avoid the heavy stuff, and pass through the, the thinner ice. The uh, first year, second year ice, we can push our way through a lot easier. Old ice, or harder ice, multi-year ice you want to avoid. We can still maneuver amongst the old ice inclusions, but uh, that means a little more sensitivity and finesse. Does it get lonely in the crow's nest? No, that's the one place I can go and stand on the hatch and no one can get to me. They can send me up a coffee if they want, but uh, I bring my music up there with me too, so. <laughs> Over my last several years, uh, my voyages to the Arctic, I've seen a lot less ice concentration. And this year, I've looked at the ice charts uh, between Canada and Greenland, and there's absolutely no ice at the moment. Well, there's a number of countries that are almost drooling at the fact that the Arctic is melting, opening up, making it more accessible to look for more fossil fuels that we can't even afford to burn. In 2013, uh, we were up in the Arctic trying to tell the world that Russia is continuing to look for more oil. We went there to non-violently protest, and the Russian authorities, uh, I'll say, they didn't take it too kindly. So they boarded our ship, seized the ship, and they ordered us to go ashore at gunpoint um, and put 30 of us in jail. Now the charges in the beginning uh, that they tried to nail us with were uh, piracy, and that was uh, 15 years in jail. I was in jail for one month before I had a phone call, so I was allowed to call home. And they told me, it's amazing what's happening. There was two million people signing a petition. There was 11 Nobel laureates demanding for our release. After about two months in jail, when I came out and saw all the support, I couldn't believe it. Thank you. And then, I'd almost thrown in the towel, so to say, given up the fight. I said, okay, it's been 30 years, I give up. You know, I, what more can I do? And then I saw this young Swedish girl, Greta, and how she was raising all this, uh, I'll say, attention, to say the least, about uh, climate change. We are tired of greenwashing empty words and promises from people who pretend to care about our future. And now we have uh, this young person on board, Maya Rose, and I see that there is still a movement, almost like an awakening of young people afoot that's trying to raise awareness about environmental issues, trying to stop all the atrocities, trying to promote renewable energies. Well, maybe there is a hope or a chance still, so. Here I am.